Host Nora McInerney is back for season two of The Head Start, Embracing the Journey, a podcast from Ruby Studio and Abvi. In each episode, Nora has real conversations with real people living with chronic migraine to see how they took action to understand this disease. So jump into the conversation for season two, a show that creates a little more space for empathy and understanding in such a complicated world. There shouldn't be so much hesitation around asking questions and asking for help. So don't wait. Join the Head Start Embracing the Journey and learn a little more about life with chronic migraine. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids to a classroom? Homes.com knows that these are all the things that you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. Summer is upon us, and whatever you have going on, a vacation, a staycation, a summer wedding, well, Macy's has you covered. If you need summer dresses, matching sets, volume sleeve tops, wedges, straw-crafted bags, I mean, really, they have what you need head to toe. I'm talking Levi's, Dolce Vita, Lacoste, and more. So shop summer must-haves at Macy's. Go to Macy's.com slash own your style. Again, that's Macy's.com slash own your style. Happy Tuesday. I'm Amy. And I'm Kat. And welcome to The Fifth Thing. Today's quote comes from Brene Brown because we've been spending a lot of time with Atlas of the Heart, which is her special that's on HBO Max. It's also a book, but she did a five-part series. We've mentioned it uh, on multiple episodes, but I'm actually done with it now, but re-watching it. And I think it was in the fifth episode, though, that she spent some time on empathy. And I decided to pull up a quote from her on the power of empathy because I think this is just an important thing to remember and I want to remember it for myself as well but she said the power of empathy I'm in it with you I'm not here to fix you I'm not here to feel it for you I'm here to feel with you and let you know you're not alone and I just think that that's a great reminder when you are faced with you know someone in your life that might be going through something or whether it's you knowing what what you need from people and I think it's okay to also express to loved ones but Kat you're the expert here so I want you to lean into this more so but that hey I don't need you to fix this right now because so many people they want to be of service and help and fix but in the episode Brene actually did role play with someone that works with her they she was in the crowds, she pulled her up and she gave several examples. And some of them were like, Oh, wow, I mean, that's actually not a bad thing that this example or this person quote unquote is trying to do. But then it's not really what anybody needs, especially when we're going through something hard. And a lot of times we think we can like empathize with something, but it's really not the same thing. It might be sympathy. I don't know. So you, yeah. you break it all down. But what are your thoughts when you hear that quote, the power of empathy? Well, one, I feel like I need to confess that I have yet to watch this. I'll put it on the list. But I really like that because I think what I hear a lot of times from well-meaning people is they're confused on what the difference between empathy and sympathy is. And they do think that I can be empathetic while I give advice. I can be empathetic while I I tell them my experience when a lot of times empathy literally is just like sitting there and not leaving and not being judgmental. Because I know in my life, when I've had like a hard experience and I'm venting or I'm expressing or I'm sitting with a friend and then they start to give me like advice or ideas or then they start to talk about themselves, it can be really damaging. Either I feel like I'm doing something wrong and so you're trying to tell me what I need to do or I'm not getting the space I need because now you're talking about yourself. Yeah, I've definitely done the empathy card wrong to people like I'm guilty of some of the things. And so moving forward, I want to be very aware of this. And I want to be very available to just sit and be and that was I think the final example when Brene was like, I want you to watch it to get it. I I don't want to mess up the role play they did by saying it incorrectly. But it was just this whole vibe of hey, what do you need right now? And like, you got 10 minutes, you want to go talk through it? You want to talk about it? What What would you like to do for the 10 minutes? And the person yes. I think was even like, I actually don't want to think about it 
for the next 10 yes. minutes. Cool. Let's go. What would you what, what would you like to do these next 10 minutes instead of forcing the conversation or trying again to come in and be a fixer? So highly recommend that special. And we just talk so much about, you know, coming alongside people so that they don't feel alone. Like that's what we do this podcast for. And that's why we share. And, you know, some days it's that you might need a laugh or some days it's that you might need a cry or some days it might be that, you know, yeah, like we, everybody's going through hard stuff. And I mean, Kat, you're a therapist before we even sat down, which today, fun fact, we're recording from Kat's office because of her schedule and the Bobby Bone Show studio is actually super close by to Kat. So I just finished that and moseyed on over here. I didn't even drive. I walked. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful day. I feel like I'm in a therapy session right now. And on the wall, there's a sign that says, it's okay to feel things. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's right. Totally. It is. But you have your podcast, You Need Therapy, and you are all about, like, you want people to feel connected and know that they're not alone. And I'm looking at another sign in your office right now that says everything is going to be okay, it means even when things don't go as planned, the world can still impress you, which I love that. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you're not alone and yeah, things mm-hmm. might suck right now, but guess what? Around the corner, you never know what's waiting well, for you. I like what you said earlier too about like Brene mm-hmm. saying, well, what do you want to do? Because a lot of times when we think we're being empathetic, we're being really selfish because somebody as a therapist, I can speak to this and maybe you can speak to this as like being a, a client too. A lot of times when I'm in not session, a client of yours at the moment, yes, yeah. but like as a yeah. client, but a lot of times when clients are crying and they're not speaking right? They're just literally sitting in my office on this couch crying. And I'm what six feet away from them just staring at them. It can be uncomfortable for me because I'm like, well, what am I what do I do? What do I say? But the client doesn't feel uncomfortable because they're sitting with their emotions and they're feeling them and they just like that my presence is there. So if I were to be like, it's okay, or say something or give a piece of advice or try to say something that makes them feel better or like break the silence it's because I'm uncomfortable, not them. So Mm -hmm. a lot of times when we think we're being helpful, we're being selfish. Right. Or even like I I tried to think about something I experienced last weekend with someone that's going through something that I also recently experienced. And I thought like the natural thing that was coming into my head was that I knew exactly what they were feeling because I've been there. But then because of the work that I'm doing and amazing people that you know, are speaking about these topics of empathy, I realized like, actually, I have been exactly where she is. But because my other life experiences are totally different, our filters are totally different. And I have no idea. I think I may know how she's feeling, but I really have no idea how she's feeling. So I tried to really be careful with my words. Like if she asked me what my personal experience was like and what I did then then. I shared but other than that I stayed very like how can I support you in this moment and that's because I've been you know intentional and trying to pay attention to thought leaders in this area because I I want to be of help to people especially those directly in my life but you know, we're on this podcast twice a week and listeners send us emails. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to read a few here and we're going to be sharing things with them. And I want to make sure that I'm trying to do the best that I can to come alongside people. So this email is from Sarah. She said, Hey, Amy, just wanted to thank you for the little piece of hope that you gave at the end of the Bobby Bone Show post show. I'm a soon to be stepmom of three. And last night I was having a bit of a breakdown feeling guilty about the lack of emotional connection that I've had with the kids lately. I turned on the post show podcast as I laid down in bed as a way to help my mind relax. She said, side note, I listen to the Bobby Bone Show and the four things podcast often when I need to relax or I need to pick me up because it feels like I'm listening to a conversation with some of my friends. At the end of the podcast, you mentioned you had a breakthrough type conversation with your son where he willingly expressed his emotions to you and you felt a better connection with him. You said to take this as a sense of hope for any parent out there that might not be feeling very connected with their kids right now. And that was exactly what I needed to hear at that moment. So thank you. Loving and caring for children that aren't biologically yours can be so hard some days and it just feels good to know that others have been there or in the same boat. And I hesitated in even sharing that story because it was such a personal thing. But 
it just came out. I had mentioned it to Bobby and then I didn't give all the details surrounding it. And I think that's another thing that I'll pull from the Brene Brown special is not your story. It doesn't have to be for everybody. And actually my story with my kids isn't just my story. It's their story too. So I have to be very careful about what I say, but I do want to offer bits of hope and encouragement to other parents that are in the thick of it, especially if they have adopted or maybe they're becoming a stepmom. But I feel like there is this like, oh, I have to share everything type culture at times. And I want to tread lightly with what I do say and don't say, Mm -hmm. but I'm glad that this met this listener exactly where they needed to be met. And relationships are are tricky and relationships are hard but just again like this feeling of this is the perfect example of her knowing right away oh I'm not alone in this feeling was comforting Mm -hmm. to her what I think what's important what just came out of your mouth you just said you don't have to share every detail like you can share the bones of an experience and somebody can say oh I've been in a similar place so it doesn't have to be I've been in that exact same space so I think about when we are sharing especially because there is this culture where it's like our whole lives can be exposed if we want them to with social media. And sometimes it feels like we should be doing that. But even sharing a small glimpse can be just just as if not more powerful than giving every detail of every part of your life. Yeah. And I I, I, yeah. I was hesitant yeah. in sharing that. I remember yeah. exactly how I felt in the post show when Bobby brought that up. And I was like, oh, I don't know, but I said it in a way that I think was okay and I felt okay with. And again, it's like that that one person. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. All right, you got to love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 15 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category, like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. I don't want to waste my time taking vitamins that aren't really going to do much for me. Like I want research. I want to know like, hey, this is actually doing something for my body. And Ritual knows this. That's why they conducted the research. They've done clinical trials on their Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. The results... Well, it increased vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in just 12 weeks. And as a woman, I want healthy vitamin D levels and omega-3 levels. And all I got to do is take my Ritual Essential for Women 18 Plus Multivitamin every morning. I take them on an empty stomach, but sometimes if I forget, I may take them in the afternoon. It's really up to you when you want to take them. There's nine key nutrients in two delayed release capsules. And what the delay release capsules does for us is it optimizes our body's absorption of these nutrients. It's gentle on the empty stomach. Like I said, I can take it first thing in the morning and I'm totally fine. And with a minty essence in every bottle, it actually makes taking your vitamins enjoyable. No more shady business. Ritual is essential for women. 18 plus is a multivitamin that you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month at ritual.com slash four things. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash four things for 25% off. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Something that I've learned in therapy is that goals are really important. Like it can really help you out. Like when life is going so fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate how far you've come, celebrate those wins, but also look forward to where you're going make adjustments for the rest of the year. And therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next three months, the next six months. I have personally benefited from therapy in so many ways. I feel like we'd be here all day if I were to tell you 
all of the ways. Therapy has helped me out, giving me tools to have in my back pocket for when I need to bust them out, coping skills, how to set boundaries. I feel so much more empowered uh, because of therapy. So I'm very thankful for it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, well, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash four things today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash four things. Again, you're going to get 10% off your first month. Can and, I ask you a question? Yeah. Go ahead. You just looked so happy when I said, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I was going to say. Fire away. For, for, <laughs> this is not rapid fire. Don't worry. But for you, when you think about, because I have to think about this a lot while I'm doing therapy and on you need therapy podcast of what's the line between what I do share and what I don't. So for you, are there questions that you ask yourself or boundaries that you have around what you share on the show versus what you share with friends versus what you share on your podcast? I think that I've matured in that area. I think early on in my career, I just was like, oh my goodness, I'm on the radio. This is so fun. And I mean, I was throwing all kinds of things out there and, you know, everything was show prep. <laughs> like I was like, oh, this will be great. Mm-hmm. There's a couple stories that I told early on in my career that I cringe now thinking that I told them. Oh, wow. And I'm not going to repeat them now because I don't think they exist anywhere now. Thank goodness. But they involved other people. And again, I think it was my maturity level and not knowing boundaries with storytelling. And it, yes, it was something that happened to me. So I had every right to share the story. But now that I have more years under my belt and more life experience knowing what the other people involved, like there was more to it than that. It wasn't as black and white. There was likely some real serious things going on. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of made it this like, listen to this crazy story that happened to me. And it is sensational. And yeah, Yeah. it is a great story, but is it for public airwaves? I didn't ever say the person's name. name, You know, still gotten back to that. But... Right. And the thing is, I don't know if it ever did. The 41 year old me would be mortified if I chose to tell that story today. But that was 25 year old me. And, you know, honestly, I've even thought about reconnecting with that person in just a way of like, just in case it ever did get back to them. I would like to now apologize for that. Because yes, it was my story. But it wasn't mine alone. And I so I think that's the boundary that I've learned over time is like, if I want to tell it, I've got to find a way to tell it where it's just my my side and not really details that not involve the other people person. who didn't agree to it. Right. And I mean, I wasn't even in communication with that person anymore. So you have people that are in your outer outer circle. And then you have your inner circle too. And that has caused I mean, that caused issues with, you know, with my mom and her cancer journey. I wouldn't say it caused issues. But there was one day like my mom was like, Oh, I wish you would have said it this way. And so then from then on out, I even had my mom write out like she knew listeners wanted to be involved in her journey. And she was so thankful for their thoughts and prayers. And that's why it became such a big thing on the show and pimp and joy. And so I had her start writing out statements and I would open up a piece of paper and I'll be like, this is from my mother. And I would read the update verbatim because I wanted to respect her and her journey and that she was willing to share so much and get vulnerable. If I felt comfortable with what I was saying, I would say it in my own words. But there were times where I literally read verbatim notes that my mom had typed up or written for me to share updates. And so that was something that I had to learn. There was, you know, sometimes my sister would make a comment, you know, we'd be eating and be like, well, that, hey, careful what you say. Everything's show prep for Amy. That's why you sent me that message the other day. Whenever I was like, so, so we had had a conversation and I remember you saying like, oh my gosh, that could be show prep. Then I was trying to remember what it even was. Not that I didn't want you to use it. And you sent me a voice memo that was like, I just want you to know that if there's anything that you ever tell me and you don't want it to be used in the show, you can tell me that. Don't feel like I get to say whatever we talk about in conversation because your life is not my job. And I really appreciated that. But I was like, oh, I would tell you. Yeah. So I show prepped it the next day. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) So, yes, I just feel like because in my mind, I'm like, ooh, interesting topic. So out of my mouth comes show prep. But you don't use my name. 
No, yeah. but still, yeah. just because I say show prep, I wanted to follow that up and send you a message of being like, hey, I know you heard me say show prep, but just so you know, I'm going to run this by you if I do choose to prep it or talk about it. Um, because yeah, in my stuff with, uh, in my marriage, uh, with my kids, I think anybody in media that tells personal stories has likely had in a, a relationship that's been affected by what they've said, unless they're just like incredibly wise and they have all the right boundaries and they know all the right things to say. But yeah, when you're publicly sharing things, there's times where it gets a little muddy and you're like, oh, shoot, you know, I hope that this doesn't get taken that way. Or like on the Bobby Bone Show, you have other people. So then other comments get thrown in the mix and then the conversation goes a different direction. But the origin of the story is still involving the other people. And they're like, wait, what? So and this can be just a lesson, like not everybody is on a, a public platform where they're sharing stories publicly. But this could be what are you sharing about someone else on Instagram on social yeah. media? What are you sharing with your your friend group? What are you sharing at church with your prayer request group? Because I just, you know, yeah, hey, prayer request for so and so they're da, 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 da. and I even I think that too. some friends that I'm like so close to I have other friends that are going through something and I'll I don't pause because I trust the friend that I'm talking to so I just kind of roll into like oh I don't know I just hung up with this person da, da. and then I'm like ooh, I gotta rein that in I trust the person I'm saying that to 100% wholeheartedly it doesn't have I know that person's not going to say anything but it it doesn't matter I still shouldn't say Get that. somebody else's information. I've got to work on that. That's me confessing that right now. Like I probably did yeah. that last week. And something I heard in what you said is that you learned this by messing up a little bit. Yes. Which I think everybody needs to hear. Like you're going to mess up when it comes to that stuff. And that's probably how you learned that that was such a big deal is because it felt so icky after you did it. You're like, oh, this means I need to put a boundary here. Yeah. When I was 25 years old, I don't know that I felt the ickiness right away. I think it took some maturing because like I was just so new to everything that I was doing and just looking for a reaction yeah and not considering the consequences of that so which we all did that when we were 25 yeah <laughs> it's like hey. it's just you. Yeah. yeah all right you gotta love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up father's day is june 16th and macy's has got you covered their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 50 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category, like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. From searching online to asking your friends and family, there are a lot of ways to look for jobs. But have you considered finding your next job through a staffing company? Your local Express Employment Professionals team is your one connection to endless job opportunities. With just one application, they can help you find a job at a company that fits your needs. Visit ExpressPros.com. And as always, Express never charges job seekers a fee. Express knows when companies are hiring, offers benefits and competitive pay, and in just one interview, they are prepared to present you to multiple companies who fit your needs. Express Employment Professionals places people in all kinds of jobs, including everything from customer service to warehouse jobs to accounting and IT roles. Let Express help you. And remember, there is never a fee for job seekers. Go to expresspros.com to get started and discover for yourself what it's like to have support in your job search. You can also start through the Express Jobs app. Download it today to search jobs, apply, and contact your local Express office. If your business needs a new application, then developers will have to write code, a lot of code. If an application needs to be modernized, then you'll need time, resources, and caffeine. 
If that sounds daunting, then you need Watson X Code Assistant, AI designed to multiply developer productivity so you can generate code quickly. Let's create a more modern foundation for business with Watson X Code Assistant. Learn more at ibm.com slash code assistant. IBM. Let's create. All right, I'm going to get into another email, which is straight up anonymous. Hey, Amy, I just want to say that I've always been a person with plenty of self-confidence. I keep to myself and I don't care about what others do. But lately, there's been this one person at work who makes me feel really insecure. She looks exactly like me, dresses exactly like me, and people even call me her name on accident. I don't like the negative and competitive feelings that I get around this person. And I'm wondering if you had any good words of advice. Thanks, Amy anonymous. And that's when I say, thanks, Kat, take it away. (laughs) (laughs) Did she say that this is somebody at work or somebody like in her life at work? And she's saying people are accidentally confusing her for her. And this is someone that is like dressing like her acting like her. And so I guess she's admitting to being someone with a lot of confidence. So we could just pivot this conversation to anybody that is feeling insecure in a certain area in their life. Like what are some some tools we can keep in our back pocket where we keep the focus on ourselves? Yeah, because that's probably what I would have to do. I'd be like, well, I can't control what this person is doing. And I can't control if someone accidentally calls me this person. Mm -hmm. And I just have to focus on me Mm -hmm. and continue showing up as my best self at work. And that's what I can do. Yeah. I think that stuff like this, there's not like a awesome answer that will like make everything feel better. But what I often offer people who ask for advice like that is I offer them questions to think about. So I would wonder like, what is it about this situation that makes you feel uncomfortable or what are you feeling? And if, if the feeling is, I feel angry. Okay. Well, anger is a justice emotion. So what feels like is not right or unjust in this situation. And then once you have that, then you have like a need that you can fulfill. So I would ask her questions back of like, what is it about this? That's frustrating. What are you feeling when this happens? What is that feeling saying to you? And then have a conversation with that feeling until it leads you down the road to what you need. And a lot of times the need is something within yourself versus I need to go tell them this. I need to go make sure she stops doing this. Cause you're right. We can't control other people. No, wish we could. If she wants to would be nice. Go buy the outfit you were literally wearing last week. There's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing. You can't be like, I had this dress first. (laughs) Well, I mean you could, but I don't know what it would be. But then you would be like (laughs) the crazy person. Well I did in high school. I bought this dress for spring break. And my best friend at the time went and bought the same dress. It was from Dillard's. Went and bought the same dress in a different pattern. And I didn't talk to her for like two weeks because I was mad. So I don't suggest doing that. Well, I'm glad you've matured (laughs) since then. I've learned a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can laugh about it, but it wasn't funny back then. Yeah, Kat's evolved. Remind me to never buy anything that Kat has No, now I'm like, let's get the same thing. (laughs) Okay, hopefully that helps. That's a tricky situation. And you know, it's hard when yes, you're typically a super confident person and you have something that's like a curveball that's thrown at you. But what do they say? Like, uh, when you flattery, like when someone Oh, flattery you uh, is mimicking is flattery. It's or? a link, it, not a link. It's a lyric in a Drake song. Um, well, <laughs> it, I'm sure it is. But I think it was a saying Copying before that is the most sincere form of flattery. <laughs> that's it. But Drake says, It's really just annoying to me. And you know, it's true. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just throw on some Drake when you're driving into work (laughs) and leave it in the car. Because once you get in the office, it's your time to shine. You got to focus on you and you'll see what happens with her. Who knows? Maybe if you get to know her, y'all become like BFF. And then you dress alike on purpose. And then you get to share clothes (laughs) and you're like, save money. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Next email is from Christine in Massachusetts. Hey guys. uh, Well, today I finally did it. I'm all caught up on the podcast. I was late to the party and just started listening in late summer of 2021. And while I know a new episode is going to be out tomorrow or today, whatever, I'm all caught up. I loved binging this podcast. It was like having a friend in the car and on morning walks with the dog right there with me. It's refreshing to hear your involvement as I listened, to hear you acknowledge difficulties, changes in thinking, new ways to try things. I love the addition of cat to the fifth thing. Hearing her laugh is like a jolt of energy to my soul. Oh my God. 
I know. I love this person. That's my favorite part of the email. Uh, I'll read it again. I love the addition of Kat to the fifth thing. Hearing her laugh is like a jolt of energy to my soul. You have introduced me to new people, books, products, and ideas. I feel like my life has grown and evolved right along with you. So thank you for continuing to put out episodes. Even when things have been hard, you've been a source of encouragement to me, your friend, Christine in Massachusetts. So to that, I want to say I totally agree about Kat's laugh. I love it. She is a great addition to the fifth thing. And so cool that someone just found the podcast not even a year ago. Yeah. And binge the entire thing yeah. from when it first started. And yes, I feel as though I was a different person then. But that kind of puts a bow on what we're saying here is the involvement of who we are in everything, even from the beginning, talking about watching the Brene special or learning these different emotions and the Atlas of the heart and trying to understand empathy. I mean, I'm 41 years old, and I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on things. I want to grow and evolve. And that I had a little birthday gathering back in March and we were all sitting around the table just laughing and saying like, if if we're not evolving, we're dead. Yeah. So that was like a mantra that came yeah. out of a little birthday hang. I guess in this recording, I'm telling you about yeah. the times where I'm wanting to evolve, but I've had a few days because I think it's that time in my cycle for me where I'm just, I want to throw in the towel. I want to be, be done. done evolving. What am I doing? Why am I even here? But then Kat, I get an email like this. And then Kat also sent an encouraging text mm -hmm. yesterday that was super thoughtful. And someone had found your podcast through Lisa and Outway, which Lisa was my co-host on Outway. She's a registered dietitian. That's our friend. She also has a podcast called The Truthiest Life. And she recently became a mom and she had to pivot. And so now she's stepped away from Outway. So every Saturday, if you have, you need some encouragement or to know that you're not alone with any eating disorder thoughts or disordered eating patterns or body image issues, that's just a quick 15, 20 minute chat where you can download and it's a tool that you can use to hopefully encourage you through your eating disorder journey, whatever that looks like for you in the moment. But I guess Kat, someone had found you because Lisa mentioned you mm -hmm. or something and you're like, hey, just wanted to share this because like, you never know who's listening or who mm -hmm. needs to hear something. And I got a message from somebody who lives in New York yesterday who I was talking about coming on the you need therapy and she said oh my gosh I meant to send this to you but somebody in my office in New York City was talking about your podcast and how somebody put this really cool dating podcast out because I did an episode on dating and I was like what like I didn't even think that this episode was that good and then there are people talking about it and I that don't even know who I am in a state far far away that makes you think of that Pace Picante commercial from back in the day did you have that no. where you're from no I mean I'm older than you but also this was in Texas What's but it was like Cowboys City around a fire and I don't know I think I'm pretty sure it was Pace Picante some people will know what I'm talking about right now but probably the majority of not but they'd be like New York City <laughs> like I'm like gonna land far far away <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's like <gasps> New York City so when you say yeah. that that's how I I feel that too like if yeah. someone in New York City was talking about I'm my like, podcast what? I'd be like wait what yes no I thought New York City yeah I've really made it <laughs> somebody's talking about me in New York but I was like oh I need to hear that like we all need to hear that because we can all get in these spots no matter what it is that we're doing that we're like does this matter and like you having your podcast you doing outweigh has literally changed the trajectory of this person's life where she was like, I've never heard what I heard on that podcast. It was life changing to me. The stuff on Outway is not the typical stuff you hear in the world. And people need to have a way to find that information. Well, and it's crazy because when it started, it was just a series here on four things. And then it evolved into its own podcast. And when Lisa decided she um, was going to step away, which I fully respected that decision and support her wholeheartedly and everything is great. It was bittersweet the day we were signing the papers to remove her as a as a co-host. But I thought about, well, do we just dissolve this and figure something else out? But then I thought, no, what if there's just one person that still needs it? And I have the bandwidth now. I think had Lisa come to me a year ago, I probably would have not been able to do it and thought, well, you know, outweigh that was a good run. What a cool thing that existed. But thankfully, right now, we'll figure this out. We'll come up with a plan. We'll take this on. And that's what I'm going to do. We're mm -hmm. making it happen. I mean, yeah. and this is a piece of encouragement, too, of just how much like 
life can change mm-hmm. in a year and it'll be a roller coaster. There's going to be ups and downs. It mm-hmm. might, the pendulum might swing the other way. Mm-hmm. But a year ago, I couldn't have even imagined being where I am now. But I had to put in work and I had to mm-hmm. be patient. And you know, I'm still having to yeah. be, but just some just some enc- encouragement there too that you know like if you're in the lows just know yeah. there's peaks and there's valleys well yeah and I think that's something to remember on both sides if you are in a place where you're in a valley the valley doesn't last forever and so use that as encouragement and if you're in a place where you're in like a mountaintop moment that's also not going to last forever so savor it I think we forget to do that a lot well, we just appreciate each and every one of you so much. And if you want to send us an email, of course, I had more I was going to get to, but Kat and I go on and on. I love how we're like, I'm going to set a timer and then we're going to quit talking at a certain time. But here we are. We're still talking. We went over. It's over 30 minutes. So um, fit things we try to keep shorter, but you know, Kat That's likes hard. to talk. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, but I do. <laughs> I know, but me too. I'm the one that's mostly like. That's me. (laughs) So thank you to the emails that we did get through. Thank you for taking the time to send a note because I know that it's kind of weird just emailing someone that you've never met. But we love hearing from you. So four things with Amy Brown at gmail.com is where you can do that on Instagram. I'm at Radio Amy. Kat, take it away with your info. At Kat.Defada and also at Uni Therapy Podcast. Boom. We hope y'all have an amazing day and um, we'll see you. Well, I'll see you on Thursday for four things, but Kat and I together here as one. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. All right. This sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting banana boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus. This is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. In every pair of Tacova's boots, you can expect handmade quality, first wear comfort, and timeless Western style. Tacova's boots are always made from premium bovine and exotic leathers, and with occasional resoling, they're going to last a lifetime. The best way to shop for boots is at your local Tacova store where you're going to be greeted by the smell of fresh leather and a friendly smile. So come on in, grab a cold one, get fitted by a pro and shop the latest styles. Visit tacovas.com. That's T E C O V A S.com and don't go gently y'all. Hey everyone. This is Jody Sweeten from the podcast How Rude Tanneritos. I've been needing a quick getaway with my family, and the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe is the perfect vehicle to take us there. It has standard third-row seating, so I'm able to pack my entire family, plus pets, in the car while also having enough room for our camping essentials. Available H-Track all-wheel drive will get us through any dirt trails, and available dual wireless charging pads will ensure we never have to worry about getting stuck with a dead phone in the middle of nowhere. Visit HyundaiUSA.com. Or call 562-314-4603 for more details. Hyundai, there's joy in every journey.